Hi, welcome back to Honey of Knowledge. And as a lot of you guys were asking questions about mathematical economics, how much you should study mathematical economics for your entrance examination preparations for MSQE, DAC, and others. So first thing is if you have completed your J syllabus, as in the maths of J, then you need to read few more chapters to be confident about mathematical economics for your entrance examination preparation right so for economics entrance examination preparation this is the mathematical economics book which i have referred and a lot of people refer this book only so uh, this book is uh, hammond now what i will do is if you have done your j maths properly i will point to the chapters which you need to study for economics entrance preparation so starting with chapter number three so in chapter number three you have polynomials powers and exponentials so over here things are not that new if you have covered your j syllabus so i'll just write this thing down so that i don't lose track of it so this is chapter number three first the thing is you still need to read this chapter from Hammond right so I'll just write the name of the book also that will make it more clear and also you can get the link for this book in the description box of this video so you can get hold of that book now once you have done chapter number three next thing which you need to jump to is chapter number six in chapter number six what you have is limits continuity and series now over here also a lot of things you must have covered in your j math syllabus as well but still there are few things which you need to be aware about so i would say in chapter number six there are few things which you need to study then chapter number seven in chapter number seven you have implications of continuity and differentiability now this chapter also is not very new for JE math syllabus but still this chapter has a bit of treatment which you need to get a more depth into so i will also label this three six seven then you have chapter number nine over nine again the same thing this is chapter on single variable optimization now in single variable optimization you already know how to calculate the maxima and minima using differentiation but still there is a bit of uh, commentary on your uh, inflection point concave convex functions which needs a bit of hands on so i will label 9 is also relevant for our purpose but yes if your j math syllabus is very very perfect then you don't need to read the number 9 but still i will label it over here because let's not leave anything now moving on we have chapter number 12 now in chapter number 12 we have something called a uh, linear algebra vectors and matrices in chapter 13 you have determinants matrix inversion in chapter number 14 you have further topics in linear algebra so i will say chapter number 12 13 14 these are from linear algebra and this is something which is a bit more advanced than your J syllabus. So I would label this together your 12, 13 and 14 is your linear algebra or you can say matrices and determinants. Now moving on you have chapter number 15. In chapter number 15, they start the discussion about functions of several variables. Now, obviously, this chapter is very important because a lot of concepts in this chapter is completely new as far as J math syllabus is concerned. Chapter number 15. Then you have chapter number 16, which is tools for comparative statics. Now, comparative statics is an important concept in economics. Now what in economics we do is we change few endogenous variables and see what is happening to our model parameters or rather the result of the model. So in that way you need to understand what is comparative statics. Now comparative statics is different than statistics. It is you observe the initial and final situations and that analysis is your comparative statics. 
so this comparative statics chapter is not comparative statistics this is statics so this is very important for your mathematical economics and if i may say so this is the only chapter which is relevant for your mathematical economics then you have 17 which is multiple variable optimization now again this is not very different than your single variable optimization but yes there are a lot of nuances and there are a bit of uh, conceptual understanding about quasi concave functions quasi convex functions concavity convexity and how they are important in your optimization exercise for multivariable functions so this chapter is also very important so i'll label it 17 over here next is your Constraint optimization. Now, constraint optimization again is used a lot in your utility maximization problems. So, 18 is also very specifically important for your economics. So, 18 also is a kind of core mathematical economics chapter, which is constraint optimization. So, let me just write that thing also down. Now, there's a reason I am labeling it together. Your 15, 16, 17, 18 can be club together as multivariate calculus. So I'll say multivariable or multivariate calculus. See, this was one part linear algebra and this was one part multivariable calculus. And these were ad hoc chapters 3, 6, 7 and your 9. Now let's move ahead. Then you have linear programming. Now, linear programming is important because it's part of your uh, last chapter constraint optimization. And sometimes you can club this in 18, but it is separate in this book and it is rightly done so. And there is a one semester course in final year of MSQE and it would be the same, I guess, in a lot of colleges about linear programming. And the course name is in ISI is uh, mathematical programming. Linear programming is also known as LPP, linear programming problem. Next is your difference equations and differential equations. Now, 2021 is something very optional because there is not much of exposure to these chapters in your entrance examinations, but I'll still label them and I'll put a dotted so that you understand those are optional chapters. So, 20 and 21 are your optional. You can read them in your free time. So, whenever you are done with these chapters, you can look at 2021. Those are not very important, but still, if you have time, why leave those chapters as well? So, these are the chapters from Hammond. The Hammond link is in the description box of this video, which you need to read for the mathematical economics part of your entrance examination preparation. So how many chapters are these? Let's look at these. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So 12 core chapters and two optional chapters. So I hope this is uh, useful for people preparing for economics entrance examinations. And I will be adding more videos on maths, economics and statistics.